Hey, hey, two. Thought I'd keep in pace with the last couple of videos and do a little shot on the expedition side of the trip we just took across the country. And this one's gonna be in regards to these guys right here. Uh, the induction cooktops and the dinner I made, one of the dinners I made anyway, while we were on the road. And yeah, I thought I'd share kind of the whole process of what I did and I hope it makes sense because I was cooking and taping <laughs> and I don't know how it's gonna turn out. So check out the video, let me know what you think. Check us out on Instagram at My Gourmet Expedition and check out my blog at MyGourmetExpedition.com. Here we go. Back to back to the order at hand here. So we have one induction cooktop going. We just threw in some red skin, baby red skin potatoes that we quartered up. I'm gonna boil those, basically par cook them until they're almost done. So that's the first thing I'm starting. We have the grill set up outside for the mahi mahi and the shrimp and we're gonna saute up some zucchini with cherry tomatoes and some fresh marjoram and some garlic seasonings. And then we're gonna pan fry the potatoes. But the way this is gonna work is I can par cook the potatoes, strain the water off and just let them sit hot, cooling off. I can just let them cool off someplace. And uh, what I'll do is when I'm ready to, when I start cooking the fish, I'll throw a pan on with some olive oil and some fresh herbs or whatever and start heating those back up and get them to brown up a little bit. Then I'll also start cooking the vegetables. But this is the start of it. Potatoes have been cut up. They're, they're kind of on cruise control. Now I'm going to go back to cutting up vegetables. All right, since we last spoke, I have since sliced up some zucchini and cherry tomatoes. Just cut the cherry tomatoes in half. And I basically cut the zucchini in half and then sliced them to about quarter inch half rounds. I have chopped up some marjoram, some fresh marjoram, which is something they had for a buck um, at the store. And I suspect it was probably because it was partially going bad, but we don't care. We picked the green stuff off and chopped it up real fine. And I'm going to start chopping up a shallot. I don't know where I'm going to use that yet or that yet, whether fish or potatoes or zucchini or whatever. We'll figure it out. And the lemon, what I'm doing is I'm just rolling the lemon under my hand and uh, softening it up a little bit so when I slice it, this way and squeeze the juice out. It's like juiced basically. It's nice and kind of mashed up. So we'll start cleaning the shallot and dice that up and see if we can get this uh, to look like something. How about that? Shallot. And basically a shallot is an onion. It just has a very distinct flavor. Um, it's not quite as mild as an onion, but the skin peels off pretty much the same if you can get it. So we're going to cut it that way. And then we just slice. All the way through. Watch your fingers on this one, kids, because it's easy to cut your fingers. We do a couple slices like this, and then we go around this way. Let's see, we'll do this. How about that? And if you can keep it together and not cry, you end up with basically a nice sliced shallot, and actually a nice diced shallot. And if you end up with some chunks in there, you just kind of chop those bad boys up, and you're good to go. So then this guy. gonna roast those with a mahi mahi I think so a little bigger pieces are good for the grill and I think these guys will use with the zucchini so there you go dice shallot all right so next step what I'm gonna do is I have the shrimp out I don't know how I'm gonna take care of those yet but the mahi mahi is out uh, unwrapped in the sink the potatoes are done they still have a little they definitely they still definitely are firm like when I squeeze on them they'll break apart so I can let those go and just cool off on their own. I could run a little cold water on them if I wanted to stop them from cooking because um, I'm going to heat them up again and I'm not going to use them all. So what I've done now is I've taken a little olive oil in a bowl, uh, a little honey, which I don't know how that's going to work out, but it's what we had, so I'm going to try it. 
some little grilling seasonings and actually this is what we had grill master roasted garlic and herb and i used a little sassy gourmet burger seasoning um, it sounds weird for fish but it's just like a little pinch and then a little bit of the marjoram and then sliced shallots and also Uh, we'll put some lemon juice don't care about the seeds they'll fall off the fish if they get in there and really if i wanted to get really fancy okay you, you asked for it so here's what we're going to do is we're going to shave off a little bit of the lemon you can do this with a lemon zester and ideally what you want is just the yellow you don't want any you don't want any white in there so i can shave this off i'll get a little white but you don't want a whole lot of that meat you want just the, the skin and i'll take this and bunch it up and just slice it into little teeny julienne pieces. And julienne is just a French word for thin strips, basically. And then we'll just turn the whole pile and kind of chunk it up. And what that, not only the lemon juice will do, but this gives it a little more of an intense lemon flavor. I'll just take a spoon or fork or whatever and just kind of mix that up to get everything kind of spread around. And then what I'm gonna do is take these guys, and they're actually skin on, which is awesome for grilling. And I'll take one and kind of slop it in there, and I actually have a second one. And these are kind of monster fillets. I'll take the first one out, kind of hover it, put my second one in, and see if I can't kind of get these to marinate together a little bit. Put the marinade on the fish. So I'll let those sit for maybe 10, 15 minutes. And you'll notice I didn't put any salt in there. And the reason I don't put salt in when I marinate it is the salt will actually kind of cook the flesh a little bit. Um, it actually pulls the moisture out is what it does. So when I throw them on the grill, I'll put it flesh side down first, try to get some decent marks. And then we'll flip it over to the skin side and then I'll season it with a little salt if I think it's necessary, which I might in this case. So timing wise, this is the hard part. So my potatoes are cooling off. I don't care about those because we're going to heat them back up in some olive oil, some fresh herbs and shallots. The zucchini and the tomatoes, I know are going to take about 10 minutes. That is, if I had garlic, I'd put garlic in there, but I'm going to use a little of the marjoram, I think with the zucchini or just some salt and pepper. Um, so the order of events is the hard part and the timing. So like I said, the potatoes are on cruise control and I can heat a pan up for those whenever and get those going but here's how it's going to go is i'm going to turn the grill on now that this is kind of marinating i'm going to turn the grill on for the fish get that warming up i'm going to get a pan ready for the zucchini and the tomatoes my large saute pan over on the over on the couch and i'm going to get that ready just so it's out i'm going to get my small pan ready for the potatoes just so it's out and then what I'm gonna do is once the fish, or shortly before the fish hit the grill, I'm gonna start the zucchini and tomatoes. And the reason I say that is, even if the zucchini and tomatoes get done, I can cover them and keep them on a low heat or no heat and keep them hot while the fish is grilling because the fish will be close behind them. If the fish finish a little after them, that's fine. Once the tomatoes and zucchini are about halfway done, two thirds done, and the fish is almost done, then I'll heat up a pan with some olive oil, and we'll do all this here, um, and cook the potatoes. And all I gotta do is brown the potatoes. I don't even have to cook them. Just a little flavor from browning them. And the shrimp are gonna go on the grill with the fish, and those are just gonna be straight on, no seasonings, maybe a little olive oil. Um, I may rub a little seasonings on them, but those only take about three minutes to cook. Fish will probably take 10-ish, Zucchini and squash will take 10-ish. Potatoes, four or five minutes. So there's the timing and all that. I'm going to start throwing things together, getting my pa pots and pans out, and get the grill ready. So hold on. All right, guys. Grill is heating up, and I'm going to work on peeling the shrimp. And this may seem really intimidating, and grilled shrimp are awesome. Um, oh, and they're not even peeled in the vein. So usually you buy them and they're split like this, the little vein in the center is taken out, that little guy right there. Basically what you're doing is just gently pinching the feet and ripping the shell off. And then when you get down to this last little piece here, you just kind of take your thumb and just roll it around and then you're left with a clean little shrimp with the tail on it. All right, let the chaos begin. This guy's on, I don't know why he jumped up to 10. 
Um, so basically I had the cherry tomatoes in the bottom of the, the measuring cup and the zucchini on the top. So when I dumped it in, it was all zucchini on the bottom and the cherry tomatoes were on the top. And now I've mixed it up once. I have also thrown these guys down. We'll see how that works. I think it's on high. We're gonna turn it down a hair. We may have some charred marks in that thing. Let's see. We have windows open because we don't have a vent fan. Let's see. So we're gonna let these guys go for a minute. Mix those up a little bit. Like I said, when about another three, four minutes, those will be done. We're just gonna set them, cover them, and put them in the oven. I've got the convection oven on warm so they'll stay hot. And then we're gonna check on the fish. I'll probably have to flip those here. Not horrible, light keeps going out. Stink, stupid light. Uh, there's the fish, we're gonna get them on the skin side and let those cook for a while. I've got the heat down to about medium high because those mahi fillets are pretty thick. Um, it's really easy to burn them and you'll see how dark they are and part of the reason behind that is because of the honey. And what I'm gonna do is take this and actually take some of this leftover stuff and just glom it on here and spread it in and that will actually soak in a little bit as these guys cook. Um, so we'll come back to this. Let's see what's going on inside. We'll probably have zucchini that's ready. Zucchini is nearly ready. Added the shallots a little late, but that's all right. You see the zucchini's browning up a little bit, which is awesome. The tomatoes are breaking down, um, creating a little bit of a sauce. We may add a little chicken stock to this before we're done here to kind of loosen things up a little bit, but we're pretty close to that. I've seasoned it with salt and uh, some Italian herbs, and those guys are almost done. All right, Tube, this is the super hard part. Trying to figure out when your fish is done, and I can generally tell by just pushing on it and these are close, they're not quite there. Really the best way to do it is just kind of take a fork and pull the filet at that seam and you can see in there it's a little, when the fork is pushing right now, it's a little clear. That means it's not quite done. So I have a little seasoning on the shrimp, a little baby bit of olive oil in there and it doesn't, the shrimp do not take long. And I just kept them in this sauce pot because that's what I had going. to this all right we're back under control but just barely potatoes are starting to brown a little bit uh, the shrimp are out of the pot I tell you what these induction cooktops take a little getting used to because they heat up so fast um, especially saute pans like it's faster than an open flame which is amazing um, so all we have in here guys is a little olive oil some marjoram, some salt, and then some Italian seasonings. And what I've done is I have, I cooked the shrimp already, and you see they have a almost a white color to them. As soon as they change, you pull them off the heat because they turn into rubber bands if you don't. I'm warming up the plates on top of the zucchini and squash. Um, and then I'll add the potatoes as, as last minute here. And those guys are basically done. I'm gonna shut off the heat. And the other thing about induction cooktops that's awesome is once you shut the heat off, that's it. The pan will cool off quicker and heck, but it's not like an electric stove where that residual heat kind of comes through the pan. So those are pretty much done. Well, Tube, that's all that's left um, out of a giant pot of zucchini, potatoes, and a pound and a half of fish and a half a pound of shrimp. We have maybe a half a pound of fish left, if that potatoes and zucchini so how do you deal with this stuff when you're camping you have to use 
um, what may be left over within a day or so, and you have to be good about using leftovers, otherwise you're just throwing food away. So, here's the plan. It's tomorrow morning, uh, we're heading out of here. We have some cantaloupe we'll cut up for breakfast or bananas or whatever, so we have some fruit. And then we'll take probably four or five eggs, scramble those up, set those aside. We'll heat up, all we have to do is heat up the potatoes. I may, you know, break them up a little bit or may not. Um, serve that with, a, with the scrambled eggs. But also what I'm gonna do is take the zucchini and the tomatoes and uh, fold those into the scrambled eggs. Heat those up in a saute pan, set them off the side, heat up the eggs or cook the eggs, and then throw those guys in. And it's almost like an omelet. And I could actually make an omelet out of the zucchini and the tomatoes um, with the eggs. And I may try that tomorrow with some Parmesan cheese or cheddar cheese or whatever you have. So it's a great way to use up your scraps, basically. And then the fish, uh, we can make a couple nice two or three fish tacos out of that. We'll get... Uh, some stuff from the store in the next day or so um, or we'll just get some tortillas with a little warm some tortillas up with a little butter and maybe a little uh, honey or something and just put the fish in there in some warm tortillas and eat them as like just fish tacos with just the fish uh, since we don't want to buy a whole head of cabbage there you go tube the good the bad the ugly I think I showed you everything um, that's cooking in the camper and it was a little chaotic because I was trying to videotape for the first time, me cooking, and also trying to use the induction cooktops and the grill for basically the first time. So those induction, in, so those induction cooktops have a bit of a learning curve. Um, they heat up wicked fast. And trying to figure out the temperature that I need them at um, because they have two settings. They have a, um, so when you turn them on, you can either do heat, which is just a number, one through 10, or you can do temp, which is I think all the way up to 420 or 450, 450. Um, and 10, I have found out, boils water wicked fast, and 450 does not boil water quite as fast or as hard. So there's definitely different settings and I have to figure out how they work, but we made it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope it, uh, hopefully it helped somebody figure something out. Um, whether it's timing or whatever, I hope it helped you guys out. And remember, that is a wicked complicated meal to cook in any kitchen, let alone a camper. So if you take this on, kudos for you, because that is a handful. All right, Tube, there it is, the finished product. Like I said, I'll show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is the good, for sure. It turned out all right, not sure how it's gonna taste. I'm sure it'll be decent. Um, but that's a pretty complicated dinner to be cooking on the road. Uh, so if you're trying to do this, you may break it out into parts like just the potatoes and just the fish or just the veggies and the shrimp or whatever. And really you can simplify it, but we're pigs and we like to eat well. So this is what we're eating healthy and delicious. Um, I'll show you the ugly right now. If you look real close, when I set one of my pans down, <laughs> I melted my strainer and then it actually got on the cooktop, but it cleaned right off and yeah that's what's left and that's what we're gonna eat so yeah 